So, good afternoon or good evening really. Just arrived at our camping spot. This is obviously just part of the Cedarberg. Um, we've got a little campsite amongst little rock sort of tree sort of circular route over here. And yeah, it's bitterly cold, but we're gonna get set up. Just got the chimney and we are hopefully not gonna freeze to death because it is cold out here. So we had a little bit of a tent incident as you can see. Oh, I don't know how well you can see. Is all of us trying to sort it out. <laughs> we had a tent, the beautiful lobby. It was pretty much a five star accommodation tent, and now it's basically just a teepee. And now it's starting to rain, which is lovely. What are you busy trying to do there? Trying to figure out how knots work. Yeah, Oliver definitely wasn't a South African scout. Yeah. So, Oliver and I have just been working some little clips here in the back of our accommodation found the first clip of the trip it's a little here, a little leaf toad gecko and i'm not 100 percent sure on the species i'm pretty sure it'll be the cedarberg leaf toad gecko which i presume is going to be a life for me i'm just going to double check on the distribution but yeah pretty cool stoked to finally get something on the board right in the bottom here i don't know if you can see there's a whole bunch of gecko eggs, that's the only reason I started looking at these blocks. But my footage is coming out terribly, but get a better look at this guy. It's incredibly cold. It's, it was raining really hard earlier and howling with wind. But cool, nice to get a herp at least for the day. Good morning from the Cedarberg. We had a little bit of a tent malfunction, <laughs> as I mentioned last night. Um, we didn't get sort of water in the tent or anything but our wonderful lobby that was supposed to be over here was a bit of a failure that's only because Oliver and I didn't put the tent up properly but you can see you've got some really awesome habitat right here in the campsite tons of water coming down those cliffs nice big plateaus up here the moon is actually still out which is crazy but yeah, we're just gonna get ourselves together a little bit. Got quite an awesome little camping setup here. Got a like fireplace, sort of work and cooking stations. Yeah, pretty great. Um, gonna wait for Oliver gets his life together and we're gonna make a plan and go from there. So we just made it out to our first spot out here in the sort of Cedarberg, looking for McLaughlin's girdled lizard. Um, species I haven't seen before, but there are also a lot of other species that are quite prolific in this area, which we're hoping to see. Uh, myself and Oliver is down there somewhere. But yeah, we're going to check in as soon as I find something. So I just climbed up one of these sort of granite ridges, well, boulder ridges, having a look. See what we can't turn up in some of these cracks. Hopefully some of the lizards that we're looking for. Yeah, really nice habitat out here and there's really no one around. So really nice place to get going and hoping. But I'm going to carry on torching some of these cracks and hopefully find something sooner or later. So have a look at this. We got our first cool hope of the trip. This is just an armadillo lizard. I don't know how well we're going to see him in here. He's pretty tucked up. Yeah, it's also Boris cataphractus, well-known um, lizards sort of bite their tails and turn around in little little circles to avoid them getting eaten. Um, I'm sure we're going to see a couple more, so I'm not going to try get this guy out too much and maybe damage him, but we'll keep on looking. And there you have it. This was my main target, or one of the, the top three, should I say. Um, they're pretty much right at the top. This is... McLachlan's girdled lizard, Cordalis McLanii, I think it is. And you see, these guys are super cool. They um, have really short, sort of flattened bodies just to wedge um, between these these really tight rock cracks. Um, much similar in habitat to the armadillo girdled lizards, which we, I showed you that one just sitting in the crack just now. Um, but these guys are far more restricted in the 
eastern sorry in the western and northern cape so really tough to make contact with these guys they just really poorly recorded uh, through much of their range and a lot of the sort of online platforms just don't have any decent records of them so really nice to connect with this guy obviously gonna like always get a couple of photographs um and he can just go on his way but not before i get some camera pics of course and bugs I'm seeing a lot of those millipedes and insects um, oh, centipedes and millipedes and finally we have another herp it's been about half an hour since I've seen another herp um, sorry this is terrible but right here is Scalodes casneri which is casneri's dwarf burrowing skink you can see he's pretty much limbless with the exception of these tiny little rear limbs on the back then he was just under the base of a tree in some dry sort of shrubbery and you can see if i pick him up he's got this sort of electric purpley blue tail and this tiny little head over there but i'm just going to grab a couple of photographs of him and we're just going to let him go back under his bush hope you see if i can't actually turn up a, a larger one to show you guys Pretty rad. So I'm going to make this quick because this thing smells terrible, but I heard a bunch of flies buzzing around and I just walked and then eventually I smelt the horrific stench. It's just a large mole snake that's obviously been killed. It was just lying like this out in the open, so I'm not too sure what would happen to it, but you can see it's pretty, pretty well dead. So bummer we didn't see a live one, but we'll carry on. So I just got a nice adult Scalotes Kasneri after we got that tiny little one quite a while ago. These guys are so sort of wormy and sort of slippery to have in the hand. But you can see quite an attractive skink with quite a long sort of purplish blue tail. There's tiny little limbs just, it'll focus real quick. Yeah, over there you can just see the limbs and then there's obviously the head right there super super cool to get a nice large one definitely going to grab some decent photographs of this guy here's just a look at the scalodes casneri in sort of more typical habitat other than my hand but yeah they they like to live around these soft loose soils just at the base of bushes and trees this one was sort of under a, a small log at a base of a bush it was just hanging out there um, you can see once they get going if he does they just sort of zoot around um, pretty quickly. Really awesome, beautiful looking skinks. Um, but yeah, we finished getting photographs and this guy can go on his way. So this is pretty cool. After missing about five or six of these, um, you can see this is a different species of Scalotes of dwarf burrowing skink. It has four fully developed limbs. This is Scalotes kafer. It's the, um, the cape dwarf burrowing skink. You can see he's got, like all Scalotes, he's got these ridiculously long tails, teeny tiny little bodies, tiny little cylindrical heads, and just really an awesome species. These guys move like absolute lightning. Well, we finally got on the board with a snake for today. This is just a little, well, decent sized Karoo sand snake. He was just hanging out at the base of the bush, I just saw his tail sticking out a hole. I didn't know what it was, I thought it was a skink at first, but yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's probably one of the most common snakes you get in this area, but <laughs> face is looking a little bit wonky, it's full of sand. Um, but yeah, we see a lot of these guys in my videos. I certainly find a lot of them, so nothing to harp on about, but just nice to get a, a snake on the board, the spot. Only the first snake we've seen at the spot, although I did come here specifically just to get the McLaughlin's girdled lizards. Always nice to see a herp in the form of a snake. Just grabbed a couple of photos and I'm just going to let him go back into his bush. And off he goes. <laughs> Thank you.
I just spotted this guy from the road. What are you doing, brother? It's just an angular tortoise, but he's was stuck on him. He was stuck upside down. Sorry, bro. His shell, his shell is super hot, so he's obviously been like that for a while. But at least we can help him out, and he can go on his way. Here we have we have another angular tortoise. Oh, he's spooked right in his shell there. These guys seem to be quite common crossing these dirt tracks. Oh, there you go. Check this out. So right where we stopped for the angulate, there's an ostrich. Hey, bro. These guys are pretty scary, to be honest. Um, I don't know he's scared, but we got the angulate. We're going to grab a quick photograph. Um, oh, he so wants to come say hello. These things are wild. But yeah, we're going to just quickly grab a quick photograph of the tortoise and get back on our way. Oliver's trying to make friends with the ostrich. But I do think he'll come off second best. It's actually pretty terrifying to be quite honest. Yeah, you think you can go close and he's just gonna jump over here and Jump, well, he's, he's gonna like put his neck over and just peck your eyeballs out. Okay, I think I'm done with this. He looks like a little done. <laughs> this is like that's his defense. No, he's scary. I'm out of here. So we made a tactical reassessment after that last spot, and I just here at a new spot, seeing. What you can see, it's a nice sort of flat region and just steeps off really, really hectically on the right hand side. So, hoping that any animals that are around are going to be in this narrow sort of strip or narrow sort of band along here. So, unfortunately, despite this spot that we stopped at looking really good, it really has not turned up anything besides centipedes. And a whole lot of millipedes, so we're probably gonna give it a skip and I like flip a couple more rocks, see if we can't turn up any lizards, and then we'll probably head back to our base and go see if we can't find some frogs. So Oliver down there can be stoked. So we just hike through the spot, trying to find some cacosternum. Have a look at the sick cave we found. Pretty much big enough to stand up in. It's got all these holes. Extend right the way through. Pretty wild. But we're looking for cacos, not for cave paintings today. I hope there aren't actually any paintings in here. I don't see any. But let's continue on for the cacos. Out there somewhere. So we're getting closer on our quest to find the frogs we're looking for. These are lake tadpoles. So you can see this one's just on the metamorph stage. I mean, he's already got his red limbs. Pretty awesome. Huge, huge tadpoles. Hopefully we can find frogs. So after seeing all the tadpoles, we eventually got something that's a little bit cooler than tadpoles. That one's really ugly. But there's a smaller one. Here's a small one, I'm just zooming in here. It's actually quite a pretty one, and then this big guy, he is a monstrosity, he's, he's probably a, female. Check yo, his so you're just trying to say the females are ugly. <laughs> yo, how's that belly? It's super nice. Sick. Cool, let's get some pictures and hopefully, actually let's see if we can find a whole colony. So here's just a closer look at the dainty frog that we turned up. I'm not 100% convinced on the ID. They're supposed to be Karoo Kakos, uh, according to some other records, but uh, yeah, I'm really not convinced. These guys look totally different from the Karoo Kakos. I'm just going to show you what the tadpoles look like real quick. So, just for an idea of size comparison, here is obviously the tadpole of the same species of dainty frog um, alongside a, a fully grown adult, an adult female. So yeah, these are really interesting and we're super stoked to 
have landed up finding them eventually after walking probably six or seven kilometers through the felt. So yeah, now we are going to get some pictures and hopefully turn up some more. Let's just making our way back up the mountain. After going down the mountain to get the kakus. Six o'clock, so it's gonna be getting dark pretty soon. We're still quite away from the car, so we gotta hustle. So we're probably about halfway back, maybe not, probably about a third of the way back to the car. But just to give you an idea of what this habitat looks that we're walking through, there's where we came from, and we've got to go all the way down there. So after we started, as you can see, we're finally back at the car in the dark. We got our frogs, and that's all that matters, because you've got to make it happen for the makers. So it's the next day, and as you can see, we have sunshines and macro daisies everywhere. Yeah, we've had a pretty good trip, um, got some new species I hadn't seen or photographed before, got a new vacation or two for some species, and now we're going to start and make the long drive home. Until the next one, see you.